You know? Howdy. How y'all doing out there? <laughs> okay, it's uh, 6 30, uh, and uh, we have officially called this regular scheduled uh, meeting with Brown Eyes Pete Board of Trustees to order. Uh, we do have a quorum present and one on the way. Uh, as always, we will begin with a prayer, and then after that, we'll uh, have uh, the pledge. So, Tonight, uh, we like to invite local pastors and clergy. We have Ken Colgrove, pastor of the Brownwood Evangelism Center. He's going to come lead us in prayer if you'll stand and then remain standing. We'll do the pledge after that. Thank you, Michael. Let's all pray together. Dear Lord of Heaven, we're so grateful today to have this day that you've given us to serve you and to make the day count that we live in. Lord, we pray this evening for Brownwood Independent School District, for its administration, for its leaders and staff members, for the teachers, the principals. But most importantly, Lord, we pray for our children. We pray that your hand would rest upon them. We pray for your protection. We pray that you would safeguard them and keep them in your care. We pray, Lord, that we would learn more about you each and every day that we serve you on this earth. I pray that you would bless the meeting tonight, that everything be done according to your excellent greatness and purpose. In Jesus' name we pray, and everybody said amen. 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 All right, we got some guest stars, some kids from Northwest, from your kindergarten, and uh, we have their principal with them here. We have Maya Sanchez. We have Brooklyn Moody, Josiah Lewis, and Jalea Egger. There's my buddies. Come on down. Remember what we talked about right here? Right here. All right, we're going to take that one. Y'all come over here. And you're good right there. Right there. Okay. All right, whenever y'all get ready, you start. You ready? Go. And then also a song called Educate.
and I know we are, and we're doing the right things. We have the right supports in place. I just think, what, where would we be had COVID not have been there? When we were starting at half of them being at grade level or above, had COVID not have hit, we would have been at 75 or 80%. There's not a doubt in my, my mind. So not making that as an excuse, it just gives us a little bit more of a challenge to, to, to work with kids and we have more room for growth. Um, our campuses though do a great job. We have no doubt our tier one will continue to increase and we're gonna continue to support all kids. We always talk about with kids, with teachers, with administrators, everything, everything is individual and intentional. It's not a one size fits all. We are going to make sure we're honing in on where the kids are missing pieces or where they have gaps and we're building on those. So kudos to our campuses and all the supports that they have for that. So I'll be anxious to bring back the, the moy, the middle of the year uh, in January. Thank you. Okay, now we're gonna spotlight some teachers over here. Um, uh, as we do each month. Uh, first uh, teacher tonight is uh, Mr. Jay Adams, and we'll read what his colleagues had to say about him. Uh, Mr. Adams is a fifth grade teacher at East Elementary. He has a Bachelor of Arts degree in Early Childhood Education from the University of Texas. Book him, almost beat Alabama. <laughs> and is a state certified teacher, EC through six. Mr. Adams has been with Brown ISD since 2019, making this his fourth year teaching at East. Uh, Mr. Adams always goes above and beyond for his students, along with teaching a new grade level this year. He is also heading up UIL for the campus and had everything ready before the school started. In addition, Mr. Adams has created a student council and consistently works to find new opportunities for his fifth graders. He truly cares for his students and will stay late and arrive early just to make sure all is taken care of for them. Brownwood ISD is thankful to have Mr. Adams teachers like him who go out of their way to achieve success for our students, putting forth the extra time and effort to help them build character and achieve success. Thank you, Mr. Adams. This month, the honoree is Janie Hobbs. Ms. Hobbs is program, special programs and technology assistant. She previously worked as an administrative assistant at Brady ISD before joining Brownwood ISD to move family as a registrar at Woodland Heights Elementary in 2014. She moved into her current position at Central Support Center in 2020. Ms. Hobbs worked throughout the summer purchasing, verifying, and sorting hundreds of boxes of new equipment classroom manipulatives, summer school materials, and school supplies, and all with a great attitude. Additionally, she has put in countless hours working on registration and processing project neighborhood transfers. Big job. She is always helpful and has positive influence in the work environment. Brownwood ISD is blessed to have dedicated and reliable employees like Ms. Hobbs, who continuously exceed expectations and provide outstanding support to our students and our staff. Uh, Ms. Janie Hobbs, the staff of the month. Thank you so much. <laughs> Perfect shirt, I think, for someone like you. Mom boss. All right. Thank you. There we go. All right. So we always recognize um, some students, and uh, this. Uh, month, we're going to recognize someone who got the highest grade received in the AP Biology exam, and that is Ashwara Nigli. Congratulations. Thanks for all your hard work, Brownwood, your whole family. <laughs> and uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think that does it for this portion of the meeting. Thank you all for coming. And you don't have to stay, but you're welcome to, because we're going to move into the next room. Thank you.
Well, they cleaned one out and they could do the other two. Well, I put out, they gave me another, another doctor for a strap of toes. Another one? Yeah, a, they, they use stents, small stents. You know, they'll, they'll let you know that they go beyond. What's going on? How are you? Are you ready to jog? Huh? Are you ready to jog? Just a few quick items. Uh, we met three times in August, so we're pretty up to speed on most of the goings on that we have. Uh, a good start to the year. We'll talk about enrollment here in just a minute. Uh, in your folder are the financial reports as of August the 31st, which will be the final one. 100% of our days complete and 100% of our fiscal year complete, so you can see there uh, the ending year report. And also uh, ending budget reports there. Um, our elementaries have started up their attendance incentives, which are important. Uh, getting kids in classes. Ms. Land just talked about the doubles and the reading scores, and a big key component of those scores and improving those scores over time uh, is the attendance of those students and keeping them in class. Uh, and we use the word COVID a lot, but what that just means is that they weren't in school. You know, it didn't matter why, if it was COVID or something else that would have happened. Uh, the bottom line was our kids weren't in school with our teachers on a consistent basis, uh, and therefore that's why those scores, uh, we saw that dip in 2021. Uh, and so we don't want that to continue. And so we have to get the attendance up to where it was previously so that we can start to uh, see gains for all of our kids, not just those uh, that are attending. So uh, appreciate our work on our campuses on that. That takes us right to uh, action items. Uh, first item would be department reports regarding transfers to enrollment. Have you looked on page four of your board book? Uh, and again, all this all this information is online uh, and in the board book. You can see this if you want to, if you're a member of the public. Um, this has the enrollment for the beginning of the school year. If you look on the far right at the bottom, it shows uh, the first day of classes we had 3263. Uh, week four, which is not on here, but it's happened since we printed this, uh, we were at 3442. Um, our pre-K through six enrollment for this year, at this date, uh, the fourth week of school is up 18 students from where it was last year at this point uh, for pre-K through six. Um, seven through 12 is down considerably, about 68 students for those kids. Um, but uh, pre-K through six, uh, our enrollment is up. I think a lot of that is the excitement uh, and the opportunities that we have with our project neighborhood uh, and the opportunity to get in uh, on those campuses from the ground floor and, and really uh, be able to participate and have the benefits of project neighborhood. So we're excited about that pre-K through six uh, being up uh, almost 20 kids. If you look on page five, of the board book, you'll see the out of district transfer report, uh, and also another interesting report. Uh, from last year at this time to this year at this time, we see an increase of 23 students transferring into the district. So we, this year we have a total of 257 transfers into Brownwood ISD compared to 234 last year at the same time. Uh, you can see most of the students that transfer here come from early ISD, we have almost 90 students, uh, and also almost 90 students from Bangs, uh, and then uh, about 40 students from Brooksmith, and then several others uh, from other surrounding communities. That's uh, a lot of these, especially from like Jim Ned and Cross Plains and Comanche, those that are pretty far away, those are employee students uh, who come with them to work. Uh, but we, again, 257, which is up 23 from last year for enrollments uh, transfers into the district. 
questions or comments on that? Well, that just shows why we're the district of choice. That's a good choice. Um, for the consent agenda, if you look, there's several items at fundraisers and out-of-state travel. We have no out-of-state travel to approve this year, um, but we do have several fundraisers that's in there. Examination for credit dates have to be approved by the board. Those are in there. Uh, we have a reading waiver, which just means that we are stating which reading instrument we're going to use for seventh grade as opposed to using the one that the state uh, dictates. We are using an, an alternative one there. Uh, TASB Board Policy 119, which is what we went over last month, uh, is in there. Brown County Appraisal District, those members who were wishing to be reappointed are in there. And then the minutes from the August 8th and August 25th meeting. The first meeting that we had in August, those board minutes were already approved, so that's why they're not in there. And the action item is on page 7. Actually, it's on page 6. Second by Mr. Jones to approve the consent agenda. Any questions regarding the consent agenda? What are you looking for? Just a small. A little survey. You blow it up using the rule. Anybody have any questions or comments about the consent agenda? All in favor? And that's unanimous. Um, do we need to go to executive session? I don't have anything at this time. Like to make. Uh, you can see the announcements there. Tasa Tasby, we don't go to that as a group, but it's on there. Uh, are we going for one day to attend a Tasa Executive Committee meeting? But I just uh, will be there that one day. Uh, our Superintendent Student Advisory Group will meet on September the 28th. We sent out invitations to that for our students. Uh, got an email today from a parent who's excited about having her son be a part of that. So we're looking forward to that starting up. Uh, fall break, Columbus Day, October the 10th and then the Staff Development Day, October the 28th, with our next regular board meeting on October the 3rd. That is early, uh, because October the 10th is a school holiday. So make note, October the 3rd is the October meeting. That is a week earlier than usual. That's all. Anybody have anything else I'd like to add? There will be no further business. Uh, adjourn at 6.59. <laughs> Thanks for coming.